Right, Jonesy, I've let you go with the old, um, your rant about Halloween. Uh, I don't really think I've got it in me to do another rant. I literally feel the exact same as I did after the Liverpool game. So I haven't got anything new to add. I haven't thought up a different way to say it, because which perhaps, you know, um, a more professional, committed podcaster might. But I also don't like ripping our listeners off either or conning them into thinking, you know, I like to be straight down the line with them. Um, they always get that from us, I think. Um, so, yeah, the same feelings. Uh, I, we went to Old Trafford. I thought we were sloppy in the final third. We didn't win a single header in their box the entire game. We got into really good positions. We did a lot of wheeling the wheelie bin up to the back of the lorry, which, by the way, listening back to that, in my humble opinion, was some of my finest analogy work. <laughs> really, really enjoyed listening back to that. Um, yeah, we did a lot of that. Swinging balls into the box. We didn't get near a single header from any corners or crosses, free kicks, whatever. Uh, side Ben Rama did as usual. I think it's his low centre of gravity as well is another thing to add to the list of why people think he's good when he's not. Because um, he's got that sort of Lionel Messi-esque, like carries his weight low, tight turns, that sort of thing. Yeah, just another could like load of wasteful, poor decision making. Um, we'll, we'll get on to the text exchange we had during the Silver Ball game in the next section. Yeah, and I just, I just thought it was frustrating. Manchester United, Manchester United's goal, they weren't that good as well. Just the same as I felt after the Liverpool game. Um, yeah. I just thought it was irritating. Their goal wasn't particularly impressive either. Thilo Kera, I don't know what you're doing. Jump for that header. He just stood there. Marcus Rashford comes in. It was a it was a good header, to be fair. Leapt like a salmon, powered it into the back of the net. But zero challenge from the defender. I think you text me. We were texting during the game. And you, you said, at least if nothing else, if he jumps, it puts him off. I agree. That may be our only point of agreement in our Man United so reaction. <laughs> um, just, just frustrate. Just another one of them frustrating, really. And a few people making the point afterwards about David Moyes' record at, at away sides. Do you think? And it crossed my mind during the game, and perhaps having two away games at big clubs in such close succession made me think it more. Do you genuinely think that that Moyes perhaps? When he plans his season out, understandably, you look at what games you expect to take points from and what ones you don't. It almost feels like, especially the last two games, where he's treated them as a a goal difference preservers rather than genuine opportunities to get points. Because both of those teams were there for the taking, not just before, but during the games. Both of those teams, Liverpool and Man United, were not playing well. And... I don't know. There's just it's just frustrating. It's just a bit sloppy. The finishing. Oh, I don't know. It's just I, I honestly just thought. Well, what was the point of watching that? What was the point? But, uh, and I don't know. You know, I I, saw, I do understand. I know we're joking about what you say about the performances, because. <clears throat> and, and while I'm joking about earlier about the change in mentality. That because we've had so many years of going to these places and being whacked off the park within half an hour, to see us still in the game and it not be a complete whitewash, I understand that. It's genuinely like for West Ham fans, long-termers like us, there is that sense of, oh, there's some improvement. But the, the Man United and Liverpool have got worse, so certainly this season. Manchester United particularly than the Man United of old. So I think the gulf, certainly going into those both those games, the gulf between the two sides was smaller than it's ever been as well. Therefore, you'd expect it to be a bit closer. And so I, I sort of understand why you, you think, oh yeah, that was it was a good performance. I I wouldn't go as far enough to say it was a good performance. I just can just about say it wasn't bad, but I don't think that's overly reason to be positive because. We've had a couple of dodgy results already this season. We need to make some points back up if we want to be in those European places again at the end of the year. And it, 
it's almost like Moyes is, I don't know if it's an inferiority complex or the way he approaches them. It's just like, you know what, at the end of the season, if we've only come away from Anfield, uh, Old Trafford, Stamford Bridge um, and the Etihad and the Emirates, say, with a minus six goal difference, no points, but a minus six goal difference, I'm okay with that. Because it was just like, what's the point? What What's the point? I, I know where you're coming from. And I, I think it is an issue that he's got to address in that, you know, he goes to any of these, sort of, you know, big, I, I love it how that, that they say it's the top six record. His top six record was actually top five. You know, he, he gets results at Spurs. Or he has done. Um, so it's top five. Um, and yeah, it's what, 60 games now. And yeah, I think it, I think there's an issue there. He's got, he's got to address that. Um, but it doesn't help. And it was the same at Anfield. And, I, mate, I'm with you in terms of feeling frustrated after both of those games. I said it last week as well, after the Liverpool game, I was frustrated. Um, but I still think that the performance wasn't bad. Um, the issue we've got is that we're, in these games, we're setting up to defend from the beginning. And then it seems like the game plan is, within if we're still in the game with 20 minutes, then go for it with two minutes to go, then go for it. Now, it was all over Twitter last night. Every fan is in agreement in that. Do it the other way around. Don't go gung-ho from the first minute because that's, you know, you're asking for trouble. But at least be on the front foot. You know, at least, you know, you can get the balance just right. And we've proved we can get the balance just right um, in previous games. You know, maybe gauge the first 10 minutes. In the first 10 minutes, United were awful. Misplaced passes, you know, you know, they were they were really struggling to keep possession, really struggling to put us under pressure. That should have been right to so the players. The instruction should have been right. Well, go first two minutes. If you spot, you, know, you can you can hurt them. Do it. It didn't feel like that we were doing that. We had one or two little counter attacks, but um, they didn't really come to anything. And that has been the main problem: is that we're getting in the right positions. Now we're playing well to get into the right positions. I don't. I think a lot of a lot of the that kind of side to our game. Um, it's been pretty good, particularly over the last two away games at Anfield and Old Trafford. Um, but it's the finishing that's been the, the big problem. And I think our XG is 18. We're like behind on our XG by six goals. It just shows that our, our finishing has been so poor this season. There's also a sign that, and I do genuinely believe this, I think it eventually those chances will start being converted. But at the moment, for, for some reason, it's either we're not getting rubber green, rubber to green, um, it's not going away or, you know, or they just need to put more work in on the training pitch or there's, it's a confidence issue in front of goal. Um, it, in terms of, the, you know, the build-up, like Bowen had a good chance towards the end. De Gea pulls off two worldies. Oh, two no, more, no, 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 no. Rice. Sorry, they're not worldies, mate. They're not mate, worldies. Neither of them were worldies. They were perfect hype for him. They, they weren't worldies. He's still, they were he's classics. still got to get there. He's still got to get there. He's, he's, still the, got to he's get the best there. paid goalkeeper in the world. He's Still the best paid goalkeeper. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not having it. I'm not, they weren't that what? good saves. Everyone wants to think they were good saves to make Re West Ham sound better. They were average. Regardless of all that, we've had enough chances, again, to get something out of that game. Mm -hmm. And in order to get those chances, you have to play well at those grounds. Yeah, okay, Man United weren't, weren't good. Well, that's, weren't good but that, that is part of it, mate. Right? That, that's part okay, of it. Okay, Liverpool weren't good when we played them a couple of weeks ago. So it's but, not just West Ham playing well, is it? That's what I'm saying. But we, you've still got to play well because when teams like that are still off off are off the pace, they're still good sides. They'll still batter most teams, right? But they have, but they still no, batter most teams. Liverpool, will, it, you know, <coughs> Liverpool will be different because they're going through a really bad that time. But Man United were were in good form going up to coming into this game. They're in good form. They're on the up, um, and straight away it was like, oh, you know, they're having a bad day here. Right, let's capitalise. We decided that we were going to wait until the last 25 minutes to really have a go at them. By then, we were already 1-0 down. Um, but yeah. we were still getting in into the positions and creating the, creating the chances to be able to get something out of the game. Now, I think, and from what I saw during the game, was that it wasn't so much a bad performance, it was the wrong game plan to go with. And I think maybe if you, if you choose to go with the right game plan from the beginning or a different game plan from the beginning... Mm. We might we might nick a goal, and you know uh, Rashford doesn't score that header. Um, so I, I, to to put it down to it, just because we lost, it was a bad performance. Um, no, so we no, were, no. I don't, because like that's like saying, well, well you must have been. Um, you must but have been finishing is part of it, mate. 
Finishing is part of it, yeah. No, but, it is part know. of what makes up a good performance. Of course it like is, yeah. But, but like I've said over the last two weeks, you know, the fact, if we weren't creating the chances, if we weren't getting in, that, in those positions to have an opportunity to finish, I'd be like, this is a disaster. We're in serious trouble here. But the fact is, we are getting in those positions. And we are giving mm. ourselves a chance of getting a result. Now, yeah, we um, are getting in the positions, mate. And then it's flipping side Ben Rama on the ball when we're in the yeah, positions, I mean, which is after flipping. Problem. I mean, that happened a couple of couple of times where he made the wrong decision. Um, but and I agree with you that he's very frustrated. Um, but you know, it, as soon as that changes, as soon as we start putting the ball in the back of it a little bit more, I don't think the performances are going to change. It's just that one part of the, the good performances that are letting us down at the moment. And I think a lot of that is down to the way that he's approaching these games as well. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you on that. He's given us too much to do at the end of games when we're chasing a a point or, you know, trying to chase a winner. Um, Especially, we're better than that. Yeah, we are better than that. And especially at grounds like Anfield at Old Trafford, um, where, you know, I think, you know, you you go one nil down at those grounds, regardless of the form of the home team. And it's very, very difficult to then get something out of those games. Mm. I know, I know um, Leeds did it the other night. Um, but it's still very difficult. I think that was like Liverpool's first home defeat in like two years or something crazy like that. In the league, isn't it? Yeah. In so, the league, I think. Um, it's doable. And we've showed it. I mean, if we'd have scored that penalty at Anfield, we would have done it. But we mm. didn't. But the fact is, we're getting in those positions. And if we weren't getting those positions, I think it'd be a completely different story. It'd be like, this is terrible. We're like, we need to sort it out. The fact we're getting in those positions and we're creating those chances suggests that. Um, eventually it, it's going to happen. You'd like to think it's going to happen. The law of averages suggests that it will happen. Um, but, you know... They're not, that, they're that's not what... proper clear-cut, though, are they, do you think? Like, I mean... It, you... <laughs> Support for the We Are West Ham podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who are the men's below-the-waist champions of the world. Manscaped offer precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, and they just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0, all across Europe. And to add to that, we've got our hands on the quality Weed Whacker nose and ear trimmer, so we're well on our way towards looking as well-groomed as West Ham do under David Moyes. Clean, tidy, and looking absolutely fantastic on weekends. Jonesy, we got our hands on the performance package from Manscaped, which has got loads of absolutely quality bits of kit in it. Uh, and I think you've got yours there. Yeah, so I've got the performance package here. I even throw in a free toiletry bag as well, which uh, can't days. go wrong with that. So first up, we've got the Lawnmower 4.0, a lovely bit of kit. Where's the camera? There it is. Turn it on. You've got a little light for your dark spots, just in case uh, you can't see certain bits. Uh, very, Not very helpful. Easy, is it? Exactly. exactly. So uh, that's got, um, that's waterproof. It's uh, it, you know it's it's very very nice on your skin, so well worth a go on that one. Vouch for that personally as well, 100%. Jonesy. That's a very good bit of kit for the job. Me too. Weed whacker. When you're getting old, a little bit like me, um, you get hairs popping up in places you don't really want them, and they're they're very persistent. They keep coming back. So this does the job for that. I actually found one out my ear the other day, Jonesy, and I'm yeah. not even 31 yet. It's not ideal. I'm I'm 34 and a half, and it's it's a struggle, mate. It's a struggle. So uh, this is this stays close to me um, in the mornings. Times. Yeah, particularly <laughs> in the mornings when I'm in the bathroom, just in case I find anything. But the, the the good stuff in here actually is pretty good. We've got we've got crop reviver. Uh, okay. That is refreshing ball toner. Just keeps things nice and soft after you've uh, you, you've done all your grooming, uh, and then you've got you got ball deodorant keeps things smelling lovely just in case you need it to smell lovely so yeah really really good which bit always here. helps doesn't it i mean yeah you don't you don't you want it to smell nice didn't you so exactly um, that. all really really good pocket inside the, the bag as well you even get some mats to to keep things clean and tidy when you're do, when you're doing your grooming so all in all in all the performance package gets a massive thumbs up it's a super bit of kit and well well worth it Happy days. Well, we've all been there, Jonesy, haven't we? We're six weeks out from Christmas at the moment, and we've all spent time wondering what to get for our dads, uncles, brothers, granddads, cousins, uh, when you just have not got a clue what to buy the blokes in your life. So we would definitely recommend, lads, joining the two million men worldwide 
who trust Manscaped, who we've teamed up with to bring you 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the promo code MASSIVE at manscaped.com. That's massive as in West Ham are massive at manscaped.com for 20% off and free worldwide shipping. You wouldn't stick a goalkeeper up front if you were a manager. So why choose anything other than the right tools for the job when it comes to your grooming regime? Trust us, you won't regret it. Uh, Jonesy, I know this may be somewhat uh, unprofessional podcasting. Um, the the plumber arrived, just to let people in behind the curtain, uh, the plumber arrived um, to kick off uh, the bathroom refurb to end all bathroom refurbs. Uh, I've had to run through it with him. I've left you sitting there waiting for a while. We've both forgotten what I was talking about, but I think the long and short of it, um, from my point of view, is just that. I, I think we are West Ham are better than going to these big clubs, just trying to hang on into it until there's 10 minutes left and then going for it. I think we're better than that. I think we can take the games to these teams. I understand starting off like that right at the beginning. Exactly what you said there. Man United and Liverpool were both playing poorly. So I think you can step up and take it to them. And I think we're better than that now. Um, and it's time that we started playing accordingly. I, I agree, and I, I think I think there has to be a mindset change within the team, in the, and some of the fans, James Jones, and some of the. I mean, I'm see, I'm not happy that we've lost those two games. Um, I'm not happy that we failed to score in both games because I think we were good enough to at least get one in both. Um, but. I think there are elements of the performance there which I think we can be positive about. Like I've just said, the fact we're getting in those positions suggests that, you know, it's not a fact that we're just playing so terribly and not creating chances. I think we are we are playing well enough to create those chances. It's just a case of putting the ball in the back of the net. And I take your point that scoring scoring goals is the whole point of playing football. Mm. Um, but, you know, you can play well and still not score. Um you know, the flip side is remember when we beat Hull at home and it was one of the worst performances we've ever seen. Everyone booed Allardyce at the end. Yeah. Uh, the flip side's that is that you can play badly and win. Um, and that doesn't mean to say but you, I would have, like you have to, to be see absolutely a... delighted about winning when playing badly, as as the fans showed that night at Upton Park when everyone booed, booed the performance, even though we'd won 2 1. Hmm. So, um, I think you can you can see you can find positives in defeat, particularly those two defeats. Um, even though you know we probably we, we we like we we approach them, I think completely wrong given the circumstances, given how good we are. You know, you're right. We are better than that, and that's what I mean by by a change of mindset. These players know how good they are. They wouldn't have achieved what they've achieved over the last two years if they weren't good enough to take it to these teams um, and put these teams under pressure when they're playing badly. Now, to compete against these teams when they're at the top of their game, I don't think we're quite there yet. But we need to be aware that we are good enough to punish these teams when they're not at the top of their game and they're not playing well on the day. And I think both of those these instances, we haven't recognised that soon enough in, in, in the game um, to be able to get something out of those games. And I think both games, we've left it too late. You know, Yeah, OK, we did get a penalty and we missed it at Anfield. That was our, mm. probably our best chance. Um, we could have taken something from there. But against Old Trafford, you, you know, uh, 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 Old Trafford against United, you know, you're leaving it for the last 20 minutes, um, and essentially, you know, going for long range shots or trying to walk the ball into the goal, and it's all a little bit like you kind of you, there's almost no method to your attack by that point because you're just so desperate to get shot on goal. Yeah, um, Dawson's effort on goal was was literally the best like, evidence of that, wasn't it? Like he like, come on, mate, like you're not going to curl it in the top corner from there. Like you're a centre back. Um, <laughs> And obviously it goes rose ed and it's like, you know, if the reason why he's there is because we're just so desperate to, to to score and he's probably in any other situation, he's running straight back and he's in someone else to deal with that. Mm. But he's hung about thinking the ball comes back to him might have an opportunity. So just yeah. as dangerous as Ben Rama. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but then as you as you text me and went, <clears throat> um, he's just as dangerous as Ben Rama, I looked up and Ben Rama literally just had a shot on target. So at least Yeah, but mate, that, I mean, honestly, there were was so time. so many of those again. Yeah, it's just oh, yeah. honestly, but, I just, but yeah, like yeah, fair enough. To, to um, finish off, like, it, it, 
we can be we can be pleased about certain aspects of the performance. Um, and that's I, my yeah. at the moment. That's why I'm thinking is that okay, we're better than we're better than sort of being too cautious in these games um, for 70 minutes. We're better than that. We need to start recognizing when when teams are there for the taking, which we're not we're not doing um, until very late. Um, and we need to improve finishing. You know, sort those three things out, and we're 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 on our way. It's all just so passive, though. Like it's all just like oh, you know, even that oh, see if they're on their day or not. So we're so much better than we were. We've got tens of million pounds worth of worth of talent. United have been on reasonable form, but that's still a precarious situation. They're one defeat away from it being ah, oh, you know, is Ten Hag all he's cracked up to be? Blah blah blah. I just think you know, go and that that in itself can can dictate if you go and come blasting out the blocks at a place like that and um, when they're already feeling a bit iffy anyway the pressure's on and the crowd are on there but if you get a goal in the first 10 minutes mate honestly the 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 even the mere idea of West Ham scoring first at Old Trafford or Anfield is laughable and it just shouldn't be like that it should not be like that um individual performances and Jonesy um I was really annoyed with Thilo Kera for not even jumping for that goal I just saw ridiculous um fabianski went off that header i guess it was a concussion protocol um he headed the ball away didn't he and then sort of See, like staggered a little bit afterwards it's, it, i don't know whether it was it was concussion or where he landed all day because he kind of he, it, it did seem like his knee buckled a little bit when he landed yeah um all but yeah a bit odd yeah hopefully it's not too serious hmm. um other than that i thought flynn downs was pretty good again uh, yeah. I think he looks fairly comfortable. Uh, it's Thomas Suchek again is just uh, it's bored. I, I've gone from feeling sorry for him now. Uh, he doesn't seem to win any headers. And he like when's the last time he got a sniff in the box? Um, just a shadow of his former self. Uh, and that four three three formation that seems to be working all right. But then I think if you add someone better than more effective than Suchek playing in his position and someone more effective or just effective uh, than Ben Rama playing in that position. Um, I'd, I'd have four nails back in, honestly. Uh, I really, really would. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, the Suchek thing's a strange one. What do you do? Like, What do you do? Well, Instead, go back to four two three one, and then have I, s- I, uh, Rice and Downs at the base? I don't... I don't see why Downs can't do that job, that Suchek's job, in the same formation of four three three. That what? Mm. And it just swap swap Suchek for four nows. Oh, and play four nows, bit more central midfield. Yeah, yeah. Or play Lanzini, you know. Or, yeah. I know. Obviously, Piquetta being injured has is thrown has thrown a wobbly a little bit. Obviously, Piquetta comes in and plays that role probably, and mm. we probably missed him particularly at Old Trafford. I think we, I think we could have really done with him in those latter stages. But you know, in that situation, at half time, you know, it's clear that we probably need to you know, be a little bit more on the front foot. Take Suchek off, put four nails on, play four nails a little more centrally. Downs is more than good enough to play that role that Suchek's been asked to play at the moment. Um, do do it like that. Suchek is not in form; he hasn't been for months. And the fact that then he took Downs off and kept Suchek on was like. What are you seeing that we're not? I don't understand. And, he you know, gen- he, it and must be the aerial threat, mate, mustn't it? It, it must be, but then he's not it's offering be an aerial that. threat. He's not. He, no, there's no agreed. aerial threat at the moment. There's nothing. No, it's not. There's no anything it's not Suchek. threat. No, it's like this, there's. We're not. It's not. He's not Suchek that we had in the first what season and a half. He's a completely different player at the moment, and I think that's just down to confidence. And the more you play him, the worse his confidence is going to get. You know, he needs time away from the eleven, um, just to kind of have a bit of a break and just to chill out a little bit, and um, he clearly needs a reset, like mentally probably, and just like just take him away, for, take him out the firing line a little bit. Downs can play that role. When Biquetta's back, play him centrally, or in the meantime, play four nows. A four nows is good enough to play centrally, definitely. Um, so, I, I, that was what I would have done at half time yesterday, straight away. Um, I don't know whether, I mean, I don't even think he was considering it, but the fact he had to bring Fabianski off probably stopped him from making any outfield tweaks, potentially, because it was another sub. I don't know. Five subs. 
but yeah, but I mean, I don't know, I don't know. It, 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 I, like you just said, like I don't really know what else he can do to get drops. Um, and this isn't a dig at Suchek. Like he's been so good, but everyone Not for can see ages. It. Yeah, he, 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 but he hasn't been good for ages, and everyone can see that he's lacking in confidence. Mm. Um, and any manager worth his salt should be able to see that and and, t- and take and take him out of the firing line. Um, because the longer this goes on, the harder it's going to be for us to get anywhere near where we want to be this season. Mm. When you've only got half a midfield, Dick and Rice once again world class. Uh, it was good, yeah. Thought... Um, Might but... be strong in it a bit. No, I thought he was brilliant again. He was again. good. He was good. Yeah. Um, See, so yeah, when I mean, you got half a midfield, like we're not going to we're not going to make any progress, you know. No, um, I totally agree, mate. But yeah, I think you know everyone else you know had relatively decent games. I know Ben Rama was frustrating, um, but that's the story of Ben Rama. Yeah, I days. can't be bothered. To, um, honestly, yeah, uh, I thought I, I didn't really understand um, using Skamaka in in that approach because he was isolated for for, for half the time he was on. Um, it, it, Skamaka does well at dropping deep and getting the ball. Uh, but I felt like there were times when he was just way too isolated for for that game. Like, spent all that money on him, and then you, you're playing in him in a, a defensive system for 50 minutes. Um, like, we need someone in that system to be a little bit more mobile, and he's not as mobile as someone like Antonio. Now, I'm, I'm yeah, but saying, he holds the ball up so much. He holds better, the ball mate. up well. He does. He does so much better. He does, and he, he drops deep a lot better as well, and collects the ball. Hmm. Um, but there were times when it was just like, look, you've got a player literally in no man's land. Like, we need to play closer to him. And the thing is, though, you can't ask him to play closer to the midfield when we're so hmm. deep. Otherwise, you've just got no attacking threat. You might as well ask him to join, join, the, join the midfield. So, yeah, it's just a little bit odd, really. But the rest of them were okay, I thought. Dawson I thought was what, good. One, yeah, I was just going to say, mate, one player I think has been brilliant recently and who's sort of getting back to those levels is Zuma. I thought last couple of games, I thought he's been absolutely fantastic. Mm. Generally, just like sort of going under the radar a bit, but just back to like being equal to everything. There was a few like 50-50s last night where I was like, oh, this is a dodgy position and he's quick and he's strong and he's equal to everything. Um, and yeah, he's, I'm really, really impressed like yeah. that he's sort of back to that level. And he, he looked a class above, didn't he, when he came in? Yeah. Um and I think he's he's continuing to to deliver on that and prove that he is he is next level. But yeah, I thought Dawson was good. I thought Cresswell had quite a good game actually. Um he was getting forward a lot, which was which was positive. Some of the quality of his balls was good. Um just no one honestly, mate, you watch that second half, we get so many balls in the box and it's just like not even close. I, I I'll be honest, one thing I will say. I thought Man United defended really well. Like you don't especially always, Dallo, especially Dallo. Yeah, he intercepted so many aerial balls. Very, yeah. very good. He was good. So it's one of those. It's easy to just criticise your own team, but I did think Man United were good. But yeah, listen, mate. I, I, to be honest, I know you're able to. I just can't find as many positives in it. I, I think we're we're not of that. We're not. We're a different team now. We're thirteenth in the league. You know, there's, there's, we should have got a point at Chelsea. I'm pretty sure that was a VR robbery. We definitely should have got at least a point at Liverpool. And we definitely should have got a point at Manchester United. We're in this for points as well as performances now. We're a different club to ones who could go and take positives just from staying in a game at, at big teams. If if we want to continue to be the, the club we've shown to be the last couple of seasons, you know, two or three points out of those games. Um, we're ninth or tenth in the league still. As it is with thirteenth, it just looks a little bit, a little bit average. Um, but Crystal Palace coming up next in the Premier League um, at home on Sunday after the FCSB away game on Thursday.